All right, so what we're going to be working on today is properties of exponents. This is just an intro dealing with rational exponents. We're going to go over three different properties today, okay? Mm -hmm. The very first property that it looks like we're going to be doing is what's called the quotient property. So I'm going to write down the word quotient property. Now the quotient property of exponents allows you to subtract the exponent. So for example, if I have x to the power of m over x to the power of n, you're allowed to take these exponents and subtract them. All right? So right here, even though you can't see it, that's b to the power of 1. So here's what we got. Or here's what we have. We have b to the power of 1 over 5 over b to the power of 1. So what I'm allowed to do is simply take the 1 fifth and take away a 1. Now 1 fifth minus 1 becomes negative 4 fifths. And that's what I'm going to type into the Khan Academy. Now if you can't do this in your head, you can always use a calculator. Just do 1 fifth minus 1. Hit the math button, press enter twice, and that gives you your negative 4 so that's what I'm going to type into the Khan Academy. What's the property that you need to be aware of? The quotient property, which allows you to subtract the exponents when you have the same base. Okay. So here we go. Let me go ahead and type it in. b to the power of negative 4 over 5. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start this um, example over. All right, here's another problem. Now, this problem is not dealing with the quotient property. This is actually dealing with the, pow uh, the product property. So we're going to write product property. Okay. Now, the product property states, if you have any base to the power of m times the same base to the power of n, you're allowed to take those exponents and simply add them together. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So right here, we have a, so have a to the power of 2 fifths times a to the power of negative 3. So if I want to do this, all i got to do is take a, and I need to take 2 fifths, and I need to add a negative 3. So I do 2 fifths plus a negative 3. Now if you were to do this by hand, you would need to get the same denominator. So if I have 2 fifths, and I'm basically taking away a 3, i got to make that into 15 over 5, because 15 divided by 5 is 3, so I've got to keep the same denominator. So 2 minus 15 is negative 13 over 5. So that's going to be my power. So my final answer is going to be a to the power of negative 13 over a 5. So if you had a calculator and you're allowed to use a calculator, you wouldn't have to find the common denominator. All you would do is take 2 fifths, all right? And then you would just take away a 3, and then you just uh, hit the math button, press enter twice, and voila, there's the negative 13 over 5. But that's just what I'm going to type in. And what was the property that we used that you need to know? You need to know what's called the product property where you're allowed to add the exponents together if they have the same base. So here we go. I'm going to type it in. a to the power, got to make a little fraction, type in a negative 13 over 5, just as so. All right, cool. We get to go over three properties back to back to back. So this one is different. This is called the power property or the property of powers. I just call it power property. Now, the power property states that if you have any base raised to the power of m, and you basically raise it to the power of n, this is where you're allowed to take these powers and multiply them together. So this would equal b to the power of m times n. So what am I going to do with these fractions? Just multiply them together. So if I have x to the power of 2 thirds, and I multiply that, or I do raise it to the power of 5 over 2, I'm allowed to take these exponents, right here, these rational exponents, and just multiply them 
together. So how do we multiply fractions? They're very easy. Just do 2 over 3 times 5 over 2. Now, the slow way is to multiply the numerator times the numerator, and you get 10, and the denominator times the denominator, you get 6, and then you have to reduce it to 5 over 3. But I loved it when teachers back in the day taught me that, ooh, if you have common factors, you can slash them babies out. So right here, 2 divided by 2 is 1. What do we left in the numerator? 5. What do we left in the denominator? 3. So our final answer is x to the power of 5 thirds. And there you go. That's your answer. So what property do I want you? This is the last one, the power property. So here we go. Here's the three properties. We've got the product property. Okay. We've got the power property, and we also have the quotient property. So we have the quotient property, product property, power property. All right. So we're going to write, put x, and we're going to raise that to a fraction of 5 over 3. All right. So this is a fun little rule that you guys, I want you guys to understand. We're trying to get this guy into this form. So this is something you guys need to, to know how to do. It's very, very easy. So I have 1 over z to the power of negative 1 over 2. Now, if you want to get this up to a denominator, here's all you got to do. You just move it on up. But here's what happens. If it's a negative, it becomes a positive. If it was a positive, it would become a negative. So I'm going to give you a couple of rules here. Ready? If I say x to the power of negative 2, that's the same as saying 1 over x squared. If I said 1 over x to the negative 2, that would be the same as saying x squared over 1, which is x squared. So if you ever, here's a, let's think about this way. Um, how can I give you an example with numbers? All right, how about this? What if I said 1 over 2 to the negative 3? Well, using this, this rule, I'm allowed to move it up to the numerator, which is 2 to the power of 3. And 2 times 2 times 2 is just 8. So see if that works in the calculator. If I say alpha y equals enter, and I do 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3, using this rule, it should be an 8. And it is. All right? So on my problem, all I had to do was literally take this guy right here and move it up into the numerator. So it's going to be z to the power of 1 over 2. And I'm done. Oh, not x. z to the power of 1 over 2. All right, let's do one more. We'll call it call this video done. All right, this is the quotient property. I'm not going to rewrite the quotient property, but we're allowed to take these away. So we have a to the power of 5 over a to the power of 5 over 2. So that allows me to take the 5 and simply take away the 5 over 2. Now, some of you know that 5 over 2 is 2.5. So 5 minus 2.5 still leaves me with 2. 0.5, but I can't write that into the Khan Academy because it, it needs to be, a, we need to write it as a fraction. So the fraction that goes with 2.5 is 5 over 2. So it's just going to be 5 over 2. Now these are equivalent, but I'm going to use the 5 over 2. So in the calculator, if you wanted to, you could take 5 minus 5 divided by 2, hit the math button, press enter twice, and there you go. There's the 5 over 2. 8 to the power of 5 over 2. And that's it.